Welcome to the 5-8, where we discuss each of the week's five most fucked up topics for eight minutes each. Five topics, eight minutes, two hosts, one very tired guest. A little singing, a lot of curse words, and as many cocktails as we deem necessary. LB, how are you? I'm good. I'm having orange soda. We used to call it orange drink when I was little. We didn't say soda. Orange, orange drink, drink is a different thing. That's like the high C at McDonald's. I know. I love orange drink. They don't. I, there's no more orange drink, I don't think. But anyway, or at least that I can find easily. I, I had a strange craving for some orange soda. So that's what I'm having. We used to, when I worked at McDonald's, we would occasionally mix the orange drink with the vanilla ice cream to get like a creamsicle effect, which is really nice. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> You don't want to hear about how I put pineapple in my chili then this week, do you? You don't want to hear about that. Actually, that, that sounds interesting. It was fantastic. It was, it was it might be really good. It might I cut that acid in a strange yeah. way. It was, okay. really, it was pretty amazing. You um, had a good week? You had a good week? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. It was a, it was a busy week. I mean, um, you know, I uh, Tuesday I went down to, to Manhattan to uh, protest the uh, imminent arrest of, of my king. Uh, me and six other people. It was really fun. Uh, it's a little lonely. Yeah. Are you a little lonely? Like, yeah. let's put this in perspective. The, the amount of people that came to Trump's defense in New York City. I've literally had more people at my book readings. That's bad. That's really bad. Yeah. yeah. It's like book reading level, you know. Yeah. Less I've fewer than people come and try to, you know, fix our plumbing on any given weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then showed up at that, that you know. And yeah. I'm not shoving classified documents down the toilet. So um, it's, it was a bad, sad turnout for poor, yeah. for Lumpy there. Um, <laughs> and he has just been freaking out. It's like, calm down. Do you think that he freaks out because he's really freaking out? Or do you think he just does that to get people to give him money? At both. I think yeah. both. Yeah. He knows um, what he's doing and mm -hmm. he's losing, he's losing it. <laughs> So, you know, it's coming. This thing is coming and he's doing what he's doing what he did for January 6th. So the yeah. end is nigh. The power is going to be lost. Another tier of power, um, you know, being his possibly his freedom. Yeah. And uh, and so he's r using violence, riling up violence. I thought it was fantastic. So, in fact, let us get. Yeah, into we might it. as well guess right in. We don't want to keep, keep our guests waiting. Keep our guests waiting. Um, here we go. I'm starting the clock. So we have a, clearly a theme this week. Is it crimes? I think it's crimes. Okay. Just making okay. sure it's crimes. I think it it's looks crimes. like it's crimes. Okay. It looks it looks crimey to me. It does. Yeah. <laughs> Trump's crimes. Let's review. They're all coming together mm. at once in terms of consequences. So there were new January 6th subpoenas going out today. I said last week, I'm like, yeah, I'm not counting on Jack Smith hurrying along with the J6 stuff. I did think the classified documents was possibly going faster it would be first and that could be so i'm not trying to progress prognosticate here on our show because we try not to do that but some of the news that came out is that we've got these new breaking news was it today it was there's today. a lot happened today this is the, this is the ratcliffe and scavino and those guys ratcliffe and scavino yeah. and meadows mm -hmm. um and and cuccellini and all these all the people that we love to make up nicknames for so it was Stephen like miller. Stephen miller Stephen miller even Miller. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to get into in our last crime segment, what some of this, you know, just everybody keep your ears open uh, because, it, you know, it does look like for January 6th that there could have been high level coordination with some really dangerous uh, Nazis and militia, group, and, you know, domestic terror groups. And so that's why I would think some of those names we're looking at, there, especially Scavino and Miller. It's like, Hmm. You know, these yeah. are boys. So we'll see that. So that's happening. We I, forgot to say we're we we're going to do an after hours today. We forgot. To oh say. yeah, everybody, we're doing an after hours. So we're hanging out. Hang out with us after after hours. Oh, yeah. We've got some stuff to cover. We'll explain more later. But we want to we'll say. Anyway, I'm later. interrupting you. I'm in, I'm going into your. Oh, you're not interrupting me. I interrupt everybody. All right, and then we have the brag. I'm sorry, guys. I still I just think it's ridiculous. But there was news today. Um, in that he got uh, some white powder delivered to his office with the threat. So, and it, and and the uh, you know Donald, Mister Ketchup 
is like doing memes now where he's holding a baseball bat against an image of Alvin Bragg. So he's decided this is the person that he can coalesce all of his, you know, shocking. He can get all of his hate mongers and, you know, and all of his bigots and his violent thugs and you, and, you know, actually have an act of stochastic terrorism possibly happening here and stirring all that up, ginning all that up the day before um, he goes to Waco and, and codify and sort of this, uh, the holy ground of stochastic terrorism, of domestic terrorism for domestic terrorists. So he's all in on that. Um, you know, that's just typical stuff. However, I do believe it's a crime. It's like another crime. This guy commits crimes around his crimes. Yeah. I think it is, there's a lot of criminal statutes possibly that are being, and I'm a lawyer, I don't know, that are being violated by threatening a prosecutor in the middle of a-, of a Norm Eisen listed them the other day. He, oh, he Norm, did? Okay, yeah, what he did. He, there's three, I think at least, that are you know serious crimes. And okay. he listed the little, you know, that that symbol they use in the law that it looks like a little horse, little seahorse that I don't know what it means. I don't know what it's called. There's like three oh, of yeah, those in is... that tweet. You know, oh. Section 18, and then it's got that little. It's got that little. Whatever that thing. is, that that seahorse upside down thing. The upside down ampersand. Yeah, whenever they show that, it, it, it you know you're in trouble. Oh, it's going, it's going down. There's actually a code. There's a statute. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that that I think is now going to be way more uh, threatening than the John Edwards of it all that it, Alvin Bragg. And I do think Alvin Bragg has been wait is waiting for someone else to go first. He's kind of like thinks he can hide behind Jack Smith maybe and we won't see him and like, okay, Jack Smith, you go first and I'll go next. Yeah. Just, you know, it, it, we are having a, a clear separation here between prosecutors and politicians and never forget that Bragg is a politician, right? He's, he ran for that office. So, um, but you know, maybe he'll, he'll show up and have some spine. I don't know. Um, to me, the big one coming back to this is the espionage which this classified documents case looks like it took a turn right into that in terms of all indications. Wow. So progress on that. Espionage? No way. No way. Who? He sold classified documents to sell them. Who would have thought? Okay. Or for his paymaster. Excuse me, everybody. So uh, because Corcoran, his attorney got hauled in and there's nuances around all that. We can't read the tea leaves on this. You guys, it could have been that this attorney told Donald, I don't think you should turn these documents over and thought he had grounds to advise his client that way. But clearly, or it could be that he said, asked Donald, is that everything? And Donald said, yep, that's it. And then those were lies. And so what all it means by having Corcoran go in there is that the prosecutor saw and the judge ruled in some way by having him, forcing him to show up that attorney-client privilege could not be used in this instance, which means the attorney was involved in the furtherance of a crime. Whether it was he had knowledge of it or not, who knows? So we'll have to learn more about that. More crimes on there. Um, and then let's see what Waco brings tomorrow. Maybe we'll have some violence. Um, did it not end badly for the other people that went to Waco and tried to do this stuff? I'm remembering kind of- yeah, the They were in of Waco. The, it was the feds that showed up. Um, mm. and it was what, 78, 80 people. Yeah, I started I, I, watching the, I, I know I used to know a bit more about it, but uh, you know, it just was, a, it was a galvanizing event for domestic terrorists in this country. And it became part of the ethos, um, and still is for a lot of these militias who are all right-wing militias guys. I'm sorry. They are. It's like, it is out of one one particular vein of our of our politics so um the extreme vein of it the extreme end of it but becoming more center for that party than ever before so we'll see what that we'll see what that brings and then as i said we're going to get into something at the end of this that we might see there might even be more crimes coming for yeah. that former administration in terms of how closely and carefully they were all the way back to 2015, 2016, at the start of the campaign, how closely they were coordinating with, uh, in criminal ways, with uh, extremists and opening the door for Nazis to actually come barging right into not just the administration, but into all of our lives um, it, through social media and other ways that actually really is there to just sort of 
fuck up everything, just fuck up democracy. Um, and some of those key characters being tied directly back to the Kremlin. So it's not a mystery. We've just been waiting all this time for there to be some actual prosecutions and actual consequences and facts that are on a record that everybody can look to, agree to, have faith in and trust. Um, yeah. There will always be a segment of the population that will just keep conspiracy, you know, being conspiratorial about the whole thing. And he's their God King and do being Donald and they'll never, you know, they'll never accept fact and truth. But as we said, every indictment liberates a few hundred thousand minds. <laughs> yeah. So every time Donald gets indicted, an angel gets his wings. That's true. I'm going to say that I think Waco and Wacko being basically the same word might have been the first instance of simulation, LB, in that in that name. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a okay. Good we got to move on. We got to we got to keep move Chris on. today. Hang we on, cannot keep our guest waiting. It's very very. Late. We are not keeping our guest waiting. And let me get the timer going. Go go. Let's go into these. All right, next moving. Uh, we're doing a little survey of really shit awful presidents, and we're going to George <laughs> W. Uh, yes. With with the Bush crimes, this week was the 20th anniversary somehow of the invasion of Iraq, which even mm -hmm. in the moment we all knew was ridiculous. Uh, Saddam Hussein was a terrible person, but he had nothing whatsoever to do with 9-11. The administration cooked up uh, bullshit reasons to pretend that he did. Everybody knew that it was bullshit, even at the time, even at the moment. And they got the votes and they invaded anyway. And that's what happened. It was the yellow cake, uranium, Colin Powell. It was Judith Miller and the Times and Dick Cheney playing her and the Times and, you know, would feed information to the paper and then the paper would print it and then he would be like, well, the New York Times says, you know, like that. It was like this weird feedback right. it loop. Was a, gaming the system. He was yeah. totally gaming the system. Yeah. And again, even in the moment, I did not know much about anything, but I was very aware that this was bullshit. And uh, mm -hmm. in they went. There was a big kind of narrative that he was going to finish the job that his father failed to finish. Uh, I want to comment on that briefly. The first okay. Gulf War happened because Saddam Hussein invaded a sovereign nation, much like uh, Tsar Vladimir the Puny is doing right now in That's Russia right. and into and in Ukraine. You are not allowed to do that. It is against uh, all the, the rules of, of, of sovereignty and stuff since the Second World War. Um, we'd like to maintain these rules and have order. And the fact that we have, me, you know, that has prevented a lot of bigger wars since 1945. The Bush administration, the first Bush administration, rightly, in my view, kicked his kicked his ass out of Kuwait. And then that was it. That was and the they mission. Stopped. They accomplished they the mission. And I'm going back in my history books. Saddam Hussein did not try to invade countries after that. He stopped. He stopped. Okay? So this thing has nothing to do with the first Gulf War. It's completely fabricated. It was a it was a, a money grab. It was it really was as simple as no blood for oil. We spent on the wars of terror, $5.8 trillion, $5.8 trillion. Uh, that, that is the amount on the war in Iraq, which was completely unnecessary. The years of the war in Afghanistan after the initial six months that were necessary and the Bush Cheney tax cuts, which you do not, when you're bringing, you're fighting a war uh, halfway around the world on two fronts, you do not cut taxes. You do not do that. Well, you put Fucking it math. cut taxes, but they also put it on credit. The whole thing. They put it on a credit card, <laughs> a metaphorical credit card. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So. Yeah. Gobsmackingly irresponsible. Just, just, I, I can't even. I the words fail me. Um, Arthur Snell on my podcast was the first person that that I, I don't think he invented the idea, but to sort of frame it this way for me which is that this was, if we're going to trace 50 years from now, the end of the empire, the American hegemony and all that, that's what done it. It wasn't Trump. It was fucking W with this dumbass war and all of that money. $5.8 trillion is enough money to pay off all student debt, every credit card balance for every person in the country, and cut a check for nine grand for each and every one of us. That's how much money it is. Can oh, you imagine man. if we had used that money on something else like, you know, hey, Let's invest, since the Saudis were, were responsible for this, let's take a trillion dollars and invest it in renewable energy sources. 
Imagine if he had done that. Imagine if he had called on Americans to make sacrifices towards that. Where would we be right now? Not on the brink of 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 uh, sixth extinction with the climate crisis. So and, and in that incredible thought, you know, because why not have the thought of like if we can if we could turn back time, right? That you know it was it was Sally Nationals primarily connected to the kingdom that did this and it would have helped us that 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 play, orchestrated this attack and it would have helped us uh not be indebted to the people who uh and the kingdom and that's you know that that looks like they were quite responsible for yeah. 9/11 yeah um played at least a role enough of a role that the that the commission found them to be responsible and that the families, the surviving families of the those who were killed, had a had a good enough case, even though there was, in the last administration, two last part, the Obama administration, it was like, don't sue them, don't sue them. I I think there was I don't I didn't understand that. I was like, sue the fuck out of them. But, um, you know, yeah. everybody has their reasons why they think that, you know, the institutions will crumble or the the balance of the things that are there Whatever. is so delicate and all tip. And you know, in the meantime, we're just letting these atrocities keep going unanswered. So and uh, on the on the topic, yeah. Nina Burley, uh, who was our guest two weeks ago, yeah, wrote a wonderful piece about her own experiences, uh, you know, <laughs> being Iraqi American and dealing with this, you know, covering the war and, and reporting about the war. And uh, I encourage everybody to read that. Um, I tweeted it out a couple of weeks ago, but a lot of people died in Iraq. A lot of Iraqis died in the war. Oh, we don't even know how many, but it's hundreds yeah. of thousands. Yeah. And again, it, why? This is this war did not need to happen. And it's not like it's all great there now. It's a fucking mess. It made everything worse. ISIS came out of that. Syria got to stabilize because of it. it was just a just a waste and a failure on every level. Um, yeah. So someday, if 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 the world survives and if the if there's still historians 100 years from now, there will be arguments about whether Bush or Trump were worse. There will be people arguing, vehement, you know, vehemently, uh, one one or the other. And I honestly can't uh, say at this juncture which one would be correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm too close to it. You're too close to it. Yeah. I I would argue that there is no Trump without. Bush, because yeah. there's plenty of information out there to indicate that they're that these not only were the hijackers, they were connected to the King of Saudi Arabia, but they were also thugs. These were criminal thugs. And when you do unpack who Osama bin Laden was and who his sort of trafficking buddy <laughs> looks like it was, it was, uh, you know, the same folks that appear to be uh, connected to Donald if you go into things like looking at the money laundering and looking at the, you know, the very obvious in the face um, individuals. Uh, Felix Sater helped find bin Laden. He had his phone number, didn't he? He had his How phone number. How did he know that? Yeah. 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 That's and it. Bob it Levinson, who was hunting down Mogilevich, um, was working for CIA counterterror at, at the, and, and in the FinCEN division, um, before he got taken in, in Kish Iran, uh, kidnapped and, and taken as a as a hostage, um, who he knew more about Mogilevich than anybody, and he was hunting down the the mm -hmm. same money people uh, behind Donald and working with the same investigative units and the and the intelligence units that were on top of the um, the terror uh, fighting the terror networks connected to Bin Laden. So uh, there's you know. It's not the guy with the string and the pins on the chart. It's not that complex. It's actually just a, a much more simple, straightforward story. Uh, however, more facts. I, I do think we still need more facts um, yeah, need and more, more information. And it's going to take, oh, I don't know, another 10, 20 years before we get it all. Um, things One last thought on the on 9-11 is that after that happened, lots of resources were pulled away from organized crime into investigating people in caves halfway around the country. I'm mean, around that's, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And not only that, it might not it, be it might be coincidental, but that is a fact. I mean, it's a fact. And and a lot the the uh we still had quite a few resources on 
in counter intel, at, especially at the NSA, I know this for a fact, that were on the Russia beat and that got moved off as well and budgets yeah. got reallocated as well, even though the Soviet Union had <clears throat> you know, collapsed a decade before. Uh, we still had a lot of, we had a, a lot of intelligence in there in the former Soviet Union because there was a lot of weapons and a lot of other shit that was getting trafficked and moved around. And um, yeah. and there was a guy that was Semyon Mogilevich, number two on the FBI's most wanted uh, till yeah. Lewis got him off. So it's all. And William Sessions started working. For and him. William Sessions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got to move along. We, we're doing we gotta good. Move we're, along. We're, we're, we can, that, we these can are complex that things we're forever. talking about. We're banging, we're banging through this. Okay, we have to take a. Uh, we, it's time for karaoke. It's what it's time for. It is. Yeah. Good. Okay. okay. Well, it's a marvelous week for indictment. Get the prince from his fingers so short. Haven't felt this much excitement since the days of the Mueller report. And all the truth that he posts are back shitty. In all caps, he distributes the blame. Demands protest in New York City. That's what he wanted, but nobody came. You know that Trump Russia wasn't really a hope. Just like the insurrection was in peace. Loving folks, will he now flee to the UAE or to Moscow? Oh, let's lock up this Putin puppet so he can't go. No. Get the cuffs, boys. The small one. Miniature. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good job, LB, with the graphics. That uh, hey. well, you know, a little good. secret. Someone I was seeing in the comments. Someone goes, "Chuck is back," because I was, I had to make all the ones last week, and you saw how horrible that was. But Chuck. Uh, so generously opened up his sort of like gift. He's like, here, take whatever files you want. And so <laughs> it's his animation, yeah. but I put it together. Yeah. The audio is bad because I'm squelchy. I don't know what happened. But to be fair, Van Morrison's audio is also squelchy. So it, yeah. it works out. Okay. Yeah, we'll fix it all. Um, we'll by the way, it. first world leader to call George W. Bush um, after 9-11 happened. Do you want to guess? Was it the guy who sent us the crying vagina? It is the guy who's yeah. crying vagina. Vladimir Putin. Hey, that's our next topic. Hey, um, we have a we have a, our guest to talk about this very topic. She is a novelist, a short story writer, a spoken word artist, a poet, journalist, combat propaganda student, a war correspondent, our friend, and up very very late because she's in Ukraine. Serena Zabriskie, welcome. Yay. <laughs> oh, you got the coffee out. Yeah. You made it. Yeah, I have to to stay awake and to be with you guys. Hello. Hello. Oh, <laughs> Wonderful. I'm so happy to see you. Right. Yeah. Right on. On the crimes. I love detective stories. <laughs> we want to get into all this stuff. But first of all, tell us a little bit what what because it changes, I know. Where are you working now? What are you doing right now? Where can people find you and locate your, your work at the moment? Well, um, I hope certain people don't locate me, say Russians. So I've been all over Ukraine, uh, all over. I spent the last year in Ukraine. Currently, I finally arrived to my home base in Odessa, where I haven't been for months, literally, because I've been zooming like crazy west Ukraine, east Ukraine, south of Ukraine. I don't know, whatever Ukraine, I was there. So I just came back from Donbass. Uh, and before that, I was in Kherson. And then before that, I was in Donbass again. And then we were all in Kiev because we expected the attack on Kiev on the anniversary of the full scale invasion. And they tricked us because it did not happen. It happened like a week after and it wasn't out of proportion. So we all felt like idiots. But mm -hmm. uh, nevertheless, attacks are happening all the time. Um, 
Today we went for a nice walk to the sea uh, to get some air with my friend and there was some howl of a noise and we didn't know what it was. It's like fire, artillery fire. And yeah. everybody's so used to it that there are people with their strollers walking around, little kids playing with balloons and spraying. Wow. And like, I've got, I'll share the video later and then go. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> it's oh, absurd, <laughs> really. Oh but in other places, it's not as funny. Uh, here we have terrific air defense. So they intercept and hit down whatever f is flying towards us, like Iranian Shahid drones or missiles. Uh, but let's say in Donbass, where I spend a lot of time, um, they uh, the Russians are very, very close and their defense uh, cannot intercept um, whatever is flying. So there's a lot of deaths and destruction on a daily basis. Um, and I just witnessed that. The same goes for Kherson, where I spend a lot of time. They just sit on the other side of the river. And there are snipers there, very angry sometimes, because whenever Ukrainians hit uh, the ammunition warehouses and the Russian uh, ammunition is on fire, Russian snipers get very angry and start shooting across the river other side so yeah wow wow where so where are you writing it who's publishing you now i know you have that you still have the youtube channel yeah uh yes i do there was a little break technical break because i okay. was uh, with a filmmaking group for byline tv right. uh, and i just simply did not have time on top of my writing assignment and making a documentary, release everything that I filmed. But I did film a lot. And right now the idea is to edit the hell out of it. So there will be a lot coming out, uh, whatever I accumulated for the last two months. Wow. Uh, but you can find me on Byline. Uh, that's my home newspaper. Uh, Byline Times, Byline Podcast. Uh, now they have this big um, new edition, uh, Byline Supplement, long form. Terrific writing, actually. And I'm not even talking about myself. I just enjoy reading like Heidi is there, like really good, serious work. Um, yeah. And uh, I've, I, I have a big article there for the one year anniversary of the full scale invasion summary with a lot of good stuff there. And uh, yeah, I really recommend that. And then there's Byline TV, which uh, we did report regularly and also right now working on a documentary, which will be a bomb as well. <laughs> and Euromaidan Press, uh, every day I write reports there and articles sometimes, and my Twitter for anything, like I share everything on Twitter. Right. So, yeah. right. It, it's really, okay. it, it, it's such an inspiration, I have to say, Serena, that, that you're that you're out there doing this. It's, you know, it, it's well, really, it blows my mind that you're doing it, and, and it's it's such valuable work, so. Well, yeah. thank you so much for saying this. It Like, at times, it does get, it's been a year, so there are moments, yeah. like, when I first returned back to Odessa, seriously, like, here you develop this sense of humor that Odessaites have, and you laugh at everything. But the first three days that I came back, I wasn't laughing. I just, I'm still reluctant to leave the house without my friend. She comes and literally drags me out because there's something that if after you spend a lot of time in a war zone, like close to the front line and with the military uh, or with the civilians being bombed, like after they come back to a more or less normal where, you know, we're we being bombed every night, but it's not like that, like right. back there. So then something happens and you, I guess, PTSD, maybe whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, you, know, you, know, you have an artistic temperament. You know, it's difficult to absorb this. These things, these are horrible things that you're witnessing. Well, and, but you know, you know like, chronicling. It, it's I'm doing something that is actually helpful because yeah, I see so. that in the West, only certain type of information gets through, and some doesn't get through at all, and some gets very perverted. 
uh, and it is all the information warfare. You guys know because you're doing it, and it's hybrid war, and it's important to fight it. And I've been fighting it, as you know, for the last what, 10, 12 years, and uh -huh. so it's just the right thing for me to be continuing fighting it at the real war because I hope that we can now win, and I can tell you about Putin crimes. But actually, I was going to, if I may, uh, comment Please. very, very briefly on the previous on Trump crimes and give an interesting accent on the Bush crimes without going into Okay. Them. Take your time. Yeah. Actually, on the Trump crimes, I, of course, would like to bring in the tree zone, I think is main crime. I can't wait for it to be on the table. I have investigated my fair share. Yeah. Uh, the key word there is Ross Neft. It's still waiting to be happening. Uh, and whoever is investigating it properly, I still have all my files. Come to me, give me a call. I'll provide you with the details. <laughs> so, I think you just yeah, I think we're just gonna have to keep writing about it. I gotta be honest, I don't think anyone is gonna anyone in our Department of Justice, I, I have no faith at all that they're gonna ever, ever look into the fact. Uh, that this it, he's too protected <laughs> and to look into how there actually was this massive act of treason that got him into office um and then the treasoning continuing throughout his time in office i think the classified documents as espionage if that ends up being prosecuted as espionage and proven to be espionage might help it might create an, an opening to sort of okay now we can look back but i i think I think it's going to be up to us to just keep writing about it. It might I be think... time. Yeah, it might be time to revisit it. A Allison Gill yeah. shared a piece I wrote about Rosneft in November of 2017. Oh and God. I saw her share it and I was like, oh my God, no, please God, no. And I was afraid to even click on it and read it, but I read it and it actually is pretty good. It does <laughs> yeah. give a, it does, it's, it's not me making dumb predictions. It's, <laughs> which I was I mean, doing at that time. It, it does kind of lay out what the deal it, is with it yeah it is not the matter of predictions i i've been following every event that happened from the day of the election of trump in the office yeah. on the daily basis and i have a file in the timeline of what has happened so i had my rosneft file in december 2016 so by the time that uh, um, uh. what's his name Miller, right? Like uh, the, uh, the the golden showers document appeared. I yeah. had everything already lined up. None of it was a surprise. It's all in the open sources. By now, yeah. a lot of things, fair enough, disappeared because they wiped it out. But a lot of us did record it, so we have it all. So whoever is looking at it, eventually, eventually, truth will out as we know. And so I want to transition to the Bush crimes in which I'm not going to go for the sake of time. And also I'm not an expert, uh, but um, this is something that you might not know, uh, but whatever comes as a healthy criticism in our democratic society of the United States, where we have the freedom of speech is being used uh, and utilized, rather, I should say, uh, by the Kremlin. Because the narrative that is very, very popular, uh, obviously in Russia, it's overwhelming, but also, surprisingly, in Ukraine, and also uh, a lot of European countries, and I believe in African countries, and probably throughout the world, is that Ukraine is not fighting Russia. Uh, that the and Russia is not fighting Ukraine. Stay with me here. Yes, the, yeah. It is America that is fighting the war in Ukraine. I've been actually taught that at the site of the bombardment in Krematorsk, where some poor lady, like very disadvantaged, you know, from very, uh, you know, let's put it, let's say it straight, low class, low income uh because not very many high income people stayed in this area it's like almost wiped out uh told us in an interview that uh it's actually a fact that this is not russian missile that just destroyed the building behind it behind her and it was not ukrainian missile it was american 
because Americans are the one who are fighting all the wars and Americans are actually saying it themselves. And then I've heard people like taxi drivers somewhere, you yeah. know, like, listen to all the Americans. They say it themselves, you know, that the Bush started this war and then they take whatever you are providing as a healthy analysis of the past and say, look at them, it's not even a secret. Everybody knows that it's America and not Russia. And Zarina, uh, I heard this from an Uber driver in DC a month ago <laughs> and I had to stop him. So it's not just over there, it's over here. It, 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 we, we, have, we do have Kremlin propaganda networks over here that are just pumping, pumping, pumping this garbage, you know, these talking points. That's been Putin's talking point for as long as he's been in office. That has been his talking point. And this conspiracy of taxi drivers worldwide yeah. is catching up because it's like it's the best one. It's he was spreading. Somalian, didn't he, too? He was like, yeah, by yeah. way of Amsterdam. He was also, you know, Dutch. So I mean, it's yeah. ingenious, right? Like, what, what yeah. backing network might you have other than Uber and taxi drivers? You know, yeah. like, actually, we need to think about it. Maybe yeah. we should, like, plant a, a good rumor there. You know, like, I'm Maybe. talking about... <laughs> anyway, so that that's something that I wanted to put it out there. You might know it, but some in our audience might have not heard it that apparently it's America who is killing all the Ukrainians here. We, we've heard that and we hear also the NATO, that it's actually from Putin putting out, he's been saying he's fighting NATO. He's not fighting, you know, the NATO is actually the ones that are doing all, and, and that's getting disproven as well. So it, it, things keep, Prigozhin, I think, just came out today or yesterday and was like, yeah, it's, it's Ukraine. It's not, you know, and it's like, okay, that guy's really coming up against these Kremlin talking points, which is, I found interesting. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know if I've you can tell with any I've of these guys. I've heard it all. I've heard that Biden is working for Putin, that Putin is working for Zelensky. <laughs> Zelensky is working for, I don't know, like, so it goes yeah. like that. But it's important thing to, whenever we say something, it's going to be used and reused by the Kremlin. Whenever oh, we yeah. are critical, of the states is going to be used and while we still want to be critical and we want to be sane and we want to have our freedom of speech we want to be mindful of how it could be used against us and maintain a certain unity although i'm not speaking with certain people you can't have unity but just stating it out there and from there i'm going to transition to the subject of my talk, which is the Putin's crimes, okay. and to dedicated several many decades of my life and the, the last year in particular. So as many of you or some of you might have heard, uh, the last week was quite an unprecedented um, week because there was a warrant uh, to arrest Putin and one of his officials uh, by the International Criminal Court. And many, including myself, have not heard much about the second official. Her name is Maria Belova Lvova, and she is the children's right, uh, re rights representative in the Kremlin. And the reason Putin is listed in the same line with this person is because uh, the particular crime that the warrant to arrest them uh, was issued is the deportation of population, namely children. Uh, and uh, they, they have been, because it's a legal uh, case, there have been very particular phrasing that there were uh, reasonable uh, uh, grounds to believe uh, that this uh, suspects bear war responsibility for the war crime of unlawful of population and unlawful transfer of population from occupied areas of Ukraine to the Russian Federation, and in particular Ukrainian children. So uh, for, for those of us who are in Ukraine reporting on the number of crimes, uh, it was, uh, well, not a surprise, but it was a question mark. 
why this particular crime? Because there is a long list. Uh, and uh, one of the major one to prosecute Putin eventually would be the crime of aggression. The reason it didn't come up first is because of the technical details, uh, because of the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. Uh, and um, they cannot come up with it along with, the no with all the other crimes. For this, uh, a special uh, criminal court or a special tribunal should be created. Um, and that is mainly because Russia does not recognize the rights of the International Criminal Court, so it cannot be applied. And obviously, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't give you too much of a detail on that. But just know that at some point, there will be a separate committee called Special Tribunal, and that will deal with the crime of aggression. And that okay. is now in works. I actually, in December, have attended a press conference in the office of the president uh, in of Ukraine in Kiev. It was very special um, and people who are on it are very determined. Uh, and the main logic there, and I'm very much into that. I want to be reporting from that tribunal, actually, like Hannah Arendt. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, that um, there are certain crimes committed all around Ukraine, such as torture uh, of civilians, Okay, and so here, let's let's get into it. Here are the crimes that are we've got. Uh, so I'm, yeah, I, yeah, I'm still talking about the special tribunal for Putin. How okay. is it possible to get Putin to respond for these crimes? So um, uh, hear me out. So there are people, multiple people, hundreds of them. I personally uh, interviewed about 15 people who were tortured by the Russians in different parts of the country in the basements. And what really struck me and all the other journalists who interview people like that, the victims and survivors, is that there are certain procedures that I repeated, say, in the Kharkov uh, region and in Kherson region and in Donbass years ago, they all go through the certain uh, number, like, it's almost like they have instructions. They first build a, a where we build the iron cage, human cage in the basement. Uh, they arrest people at a certain time uh, at night. Uh, they put bags on their head in a certain way. They even tie their hands behind their back in a certain way. And then the way they torture, and I'm not going to go into graphic details, mm -hmm. is like all on certain protocols. And it's almost impossible possible being a logical human being to imagine uh, that these are all the saddest who have telepathy or some kind of mystical connection right, with it all the same way so it seems like it's a unit that's been trained yes. and yeah. it's a it's a it's a strategy of policy of fear inducing mm -hmm. fear so the rest of the population is afraid and doesn't speak terrorism yeah against the occupants and um what this the committee on the special tribunal in the office of the president confirmed to me. I have a video on my YouTube channel. I actually asked the question and I had them uh, excitedly responding to me that, yes, exactly. We cannot obtain a written document. Russians are infamous for not writing anything down. Putin doesn't give any uh, written uh, orders. He doesn't have a computer. He doesn't have a cell phone. Hmm. Everything is like sent through messengers. Like um, a mob boss. Yes. yes, exactly. However, by comparing these notes, we can, or, or those who investigated, can eventually come up with a case, strong case and the evidence. And that's what we hope for. So that, that's one thing, the special tribunal. And then there are a number of crimes that are being committed on a daily basis. And some of them I've already mentioned, just telling what's happening here. And this is indiscriminate 
targeting of civilian objects. And I have been witnessing, and the whole Ukraine, the whole country, have been witnessing it for the whole year, uh, mm -hmm. because every day their residential area has been struck. The other day, two days ago, I'm sitting here writing, and there's a big explosion, like my walls are shaken, and it's a monastery quite close to me that is being hit, and one of the monks, he's actually a plumber monk, whatever, I'm not an expert in monks, but in his cell is being injured, right? Okay. And this, this happens every day in many, many cities. Like uh, today they, uh, they were attacking Krivi Rih overnight, uh, then five people were killed in Kramatorsk. Uh, so the, the targeting of civilians and civilian structures. Yeah. Yeah. Purposely, Medics now they're deliberately, getting... and they also target uh, through the winter. They've been targeting quite unsuccessfully uh, the uh, power junctions and the power right. hubs, trying to establish what's called holodomor, like basically induced. Yeah. Yes, by cold. But it was like really bad calculation. A, Ukraine is not a such terribly cold country. B, uh, Ukrainians are very, very good about fixing everything. So, yeah. yes, we did spend a big chunk of time in Odessa uh, with candlelight and no internet. I'm one of them. But, you, you know, at the end of the day, they would manage to turn on the electricity two hours a day and people just adjust and nobody was really like we were suffering and in some other areas people were suffering more when there's no water no gas no heat uh no electricity it's really bad don't get me wrong uh but people are strong and they they were not going to surrender just because of that so that that's considered a war crime uh so i mentioned torture there's things and proven cases of sexual violence right. yeah, uh, very much know, women, men, children, you know, you name it. Uh, then there are uh, less less known cases, such as the use of uh, banned weapons, like cluster bombs. Uh, say I was in Kherson reporting from a playground was bombed and some woman is coming out from her destroyed apartment to me and bringing me this part that looks like it's like that big, sort of like the size of my hand. And it looks like this really sick nail file with the like nails on it. And that thing flew into her pillow. And oh, this God. is the parts of the cluster bombs. That's what happens. It just flies in the middle, say, of a playground. And the parts are exploding and going all the way around to the all uh, sound and buildings. Like all the windows are shattered. And then a lot of people are being either killed or injured or, you know, their belongings being stuck with this, this part. And that's called cluster uh, bombs. Or there are things like phosphorus bombs or lightning projectile that look actually very beautiful. They look like this uh, fireworks oh, and, and then they fall silently and they burn. They burn whatever they fall on completely. And the trick is that people right next to it might not even hear it until they're burning because it's so silent. Is that, wait, is that white phosphorus? Well, it's tricky because people call it white phosphorus, but we but did that's a war crime too. If they're using yeah, is that that chemical, it, it's yeah, it's a war crime, but they're not as idiotic as just to do it because it's it's really like out there war crime. So yeah. they use the lightning projectiles called lustra, which means chandelier, which technically is not a war crime to use uh, if you target in a military object to lighten it up. However, they do it over the civilian objects and they do it to destroy them. So yeah. that's a war crime. And the, it's forthcoming in our byline time documentary because we've been actually investigating it under fire, under shell, and it was quite quite an investigation uh, to do. So that's forthcoming. Uh, then like just today, I shared uh, a tweet. I interviewed paramedics, American, an American one and a Ukrainian one, who are given tactical medical training for civilians and military. And they told me that when they are working in a combat situation, they have to cover their red cross, the insignia, oh, uh, because 
the Russians target uh, the the Red Cross yeah. and the medics. And yeah. I did a mini investigation on that. Uh, in fact, in February near Bakhmut, uh, you might have heard the, the name of the town. That's the one that all the, yeah. well, a lot of fighting is going on right now. Uh, a, an American paramedic was killed there. Uh, in February, mm -hmm. and I actually spoke to a lady at a gas station. She gave me a little talisman, like a little thread to put around my wrist. And she said, like, you're going there, take that, because that guy was also going there, and I didn't give one to him, and he was killed. Oh. So, uh, yeah, so, um, and there's a CNN exclusive video where you see how the Russians are targeting the ambulance. Uh, and uh, they definitely targeting the uh, cars and the vehicles that say press on them. I know that because I've been in, in these situations. Like in Kherson, they see it and they target um, you. Uh, so things like this, this is uh, targeted, deliberately targeting medics uh, with insignia is a war crime according to G Geneva Convention. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the list just goes on and on and on, and uh, the, uh, there will be more warrants for arrest. And here, like, I will conclude this all uh, with the argument that many bring up and say, what's the point uh, in issuing such a warrant? He'll never be arrested. Not exactly true. He might not be arrested because he might not go to the countries that might arrest him, but... These are 123 countries that uh, ratified the Roman statute. So he basically cannot travel unless he goes to Turkmenistan or some other, you know. Pyongyang is lovely this time of year, is what I've heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And we don't want to speak down about certain parts of the world that are not the parts of the world that ratified the Roman statute. But it seriously limits where Putin can go. Uh, yeah. And uh, also, it's it's as a big blow on. Well, I wouldn't call it a prestige. He doesn't exactly has, uh, doesn't has a prestige. Uh, whatever countries are still uh, thinking about maybe playing both ways, they will think twice because right. he's yeah. a, a, a recognized criminal. Yeah, so, I think when the atrocities get. Are, are rolled out in front of everyone in a court. I, I really hope you can be in that court. Um, it, it just would be incredible to have, to get your witness, bearing witness to that. Um, but the when that all becomes just in, indisputable and the evidence is presented, then that's this man's legacy. That's it. Mm -hmm. Nothing right. else. Nothing that really else. Matters. That's it. And so anybody who was rubbing shoulders with him or trying to do a transaction with him or praising him here or bowing down to him in Helsinki or running around thinking they could still do oil deals with him. Any of these motherfuckers. I don't think him on Fox news yeah. on Fox news pairing this right. You know, anybody that, that was, it felt great because, Oh, I got to be RT loves me. Any, any all the way down the troll bridge. <laughs> You're all going out with that baby. That's your and baby. There, and there will be also mass rape, ge it, it, genocide, genocide, children, genocide. is oh. on the list because I didn't even touch upon the mass graves, which is also my specialty. Yeah. I've yeah. visited many and reported. If you're interested in mass graves, please come to my YouTube channel. You know, oh, like it's <laughs> you're getting punchy now. Oh, what is it? Yeah, yeah. I have oh, you I wrote do stuff have, for my site. It's good about I'm yeah. invested. In the mass graves in particular, because my uh, ancestors on both sides are buried in mass graves and yeah. one set in Ukraine. So I actually have something to say about them as an owner of this mass grave history. It yeah. naturally interests me. How do people end up in them? So uh, that will all be eventually on the list. And even though right now the United Nations decided not to state that there was and is a genocide of Ukrainian people, eventually they will, because there's all the evidence and you don't have to go any further than the Kremlin's own statements in their own 
yeah. depressed, you know, yeah. if you even call it that. Yeah. When they say that Ukraine doesn't exist as a country, there's no Ukrainian language, and there's like you look at the definition of genocide and it goes like A, B, C, D. It fits right into what uh, the definition of genocide. So it will be on the list. It's coming. We're just waiting. Uh, recording, reporting, and I'm personally waiting to report from from the special tribunal. Wow! wow. Yeah. Wow, Zarina. I can't, I can't even. As, as much as we're excited to get yes. Trump, I think getting Putin is kind of yeah. Well, once we get one, we'll get the other. You know, they are a package deal, aren't they? Yep. <laughs> yeah. They I have, I have a couple things to add um, quickly. Uh, that was that was amazing. Thank you for all of that uh, knowledge and sharing that with us. Um, I hope you're looking at the comments because lots of people leaving I very, know. very complimentary. I don't know what the comments. I just see your lovely face. I don't see okay, it. That's, that's, you can look at it later, but I just want you to know later. the audience is all in awe of you as we are. Yeah. Um, you mentioned well, the leftists. Well, being all of me, being all of Ukrainians, these are the people who should be owed, you know. We we yeah. the, the whole thing is so inspiring. Um, you mentioned it the uh, the leftists who are kind of like trumpeting the whole Putin line, and I think one of the ways that the the horseshoe left kind of feeds this lie, this you know, is to make it seem like it's all just one big war engine and it's just this never ending thing, and yeah. all wars are the same, and blah blah blah. And the truth is that not all wars are the same. There are wars that need to be fought, and this, in my opinion, is one of them. This is a, a war about uh, it's democracy versus totalitarianism. It's you know people who are good versus fucking raw evil. This is as close to raw evil as we get on the face of the planet right now. And if these quote unquote leftists can't figure this shit out, then I don't know what to tell them. But pacifism is not always the answer. It just isn't. You know, historically, you can go back and look at how that works out for you. It doesn't usually work out all that great. Sometimes you got to fight a war to stop some, to stop, you know, the face of evil. That's just well, that's why that crime of aggression mm -hmm. is is so important to to prosecute. Yep. Um, and to call out, name, and prosecute because you yeah. know it's it's self defense <laughs> is uh, war as self defense is. Um, it, legitimately so for the Ukrainians, right? It, it, and preservation, yep. self-preservation yes. um, is, it's not, there. there's an argument for pacifism in there, quite frankly. There just is, you know? I had one thing, I had one thought of like, I wonder if the, Zarina, if the, um, the reason why the, the crimes against the children, of kidnapping the children and, and, appropriating them and then god knows what the camps are they're going through in terms of naming putin on that if there is uh if we don't have some intelligence or some evidence that perhaps of a conversation he had or something he did write down or some communication that was recorded where he, he personally can be oh yeah named yeah. in that crime yeah that's the Giving reason instructions specifically to this woman and yeah, saying this is what i want you to do with these kids yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because he was um, actually having a public conversation with her where she yeah. was reporting that even she personally adopted a 15 year old Ukrainian boy that basically they stole. Yep. Yeah. And so there's a recorded conversation, and they, they were basically oh, boasting yeah. left and right that they are taking children from Ukraine, and that that was. That was stupid. They got themselves in that. They got caught. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Well, it's a bad thing to be like if, if the ICC accuses you of war crimes involving children. That's probably not great. Ron DeSantis <laughs> back this guy. Maybe somebody should tell Ron DeSantis. Trump back this guy. Tucker Carlson back this guy. Rupert Murdoch back this guy. This is your guy. This is this your guy. genocidal child rapey guy. That's who he is. Yeah. Um, yeah. One more thing, I think this is a good a good way to sign this off. Zarina, you mentioned uh, all of the ways that Ukraine fought back and why you know Putin's thing didn't work. Um, about when the winter came and the the it's not Holodomor; it's similar to that. The word about dying of cold. It was a mild winter, 
And I'm not really a religious person, but that seems like God saying, fuck you to Putin. I'm sorry. It just does. That's it. It yeah. was a mild winter. Putin needed it to be not. And it was, and it was mild. And uh, well, maybe he should stop sucking oil out of the earth and polluting yeah. everything and, and paying for an oil, a global oil and gas mob to go and thwart democracies everywhere. They were they're trying to put some guardrails in and get off of this fucking devil's urine. That is, you know, <laughs> Maybe, maybe that, maybe, you know, maybe that's a little bit of karma, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, you know, sometimes I, 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 I read about history a lot. I, I, sometimes in battles and things that happen, there's some random act of God that just fucks everything up. It's just like the Spanish Armada is going and then there's a fucking hurt, whatever, a big storm and half the fleet sinks. Yeah. That shit happens all the time. And this yep. is an act of God. And the act of God is working against this force of evil, which yeah. is nice to see because sometimes the act of God doesn't seem to do that. Yeah. Well, you know, I always, when I had my literary channel, which you guys might remember. I loved your literary We loved it. it. So yeah. Good. Uh, so good. It, I canceled it. It got obsolete because I, it just, no, it doesn't feel right right now and also because a lot of it it wasn't dealing with the russian literature per se it was with the uh post-soviet space literature so in mm -hmm. all languages including ukrainian lithuanian georgian you name it i had all kind of guests and authors uh, but a lot of it was russophone in translation it was an english language channel um but I always saw that, and I, it still is. Like, my favorite book of all times is War and Peace. Mm -hmm. And the one, one a piece that I appreciate the most, especially now, is the epilogue, um, which most people find tedious and can't read. Uh, but in the epilogue, Tolstoy is thinking, what is the nature of wars? What makes uh, people move across the continent is it the power of one person uh napoleon in in the case of war and peace in or in other cases other people we've been talking about or is it the whole collective energy collective lives of all people and he gravitates to the idea that it's the collective force of every person every single person and um, I still don't know the answer. I yeah. mean, and I, I he did, doesn't know the answer. Well, I don't. It's, think a, it's a great question, right? It, that everyone struggles with. Like, where does violence come from? Why do we do this to one another? And what causes that kind of mimetic contagion, where all of a sudden you'll have people swarming into saying, "Yes, are the answer to the solution, right? The answer to our problems is to go kill our fellow man." There is a, a fantastic uh, correspondence between uh, Freud and Einstein in, in, just before the World War II. I've actually... Two, two uh, dummies, my, okay. On my Medium blog, I, I just copied it and you can read it because I just loved it so much. It was way before the war. It just like, they both don't know. Like Freud is talking yeah. to Einstein at why I war. Figure it out. And they don't know. So you, if you're interested, like I actually really, really recommend it if you like thinking in a more abstract terms. But yeah. the last thing that I'll say, because I know you need to, to you know, move on, is that it's so bitter for me to be uh, mentioning Tolstoy right now because the Russians canceled their own literature, the Russian literature. And right now it almost hurts to mention my favorite book, because of everything that the Russians have done here in Ukraine, I haven't reread it yet, like most most Ukrainians, because I I feel like I can't. And they that and it's not what Ukrainians did; it was Putin did, and I consider that another crime. I would put yeah. him. On yeah, I think so. It's a special criminal yeah. for killing the Russian culture. So yeah. with that, I depart. <laughs> <laughs> Zarina, he did not kill the Russian culture. The Russian culture survives. And I think we do need to make a distinction between what Putin is and what Russian culture is. Uh, as Marie Kast pointed out, you know, Tolstoy was a pacifist. Tolstoy was very influential on Gandhi. We all know what Gandhi did. So there is this, this legacy of uh, 
anti-Putinism, shall we say. Only that, from that the arts. Yes. So there will be a reckoning for the artists. A discussion because if you look, we'll talk about it some other time. It's more complex than that. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but you know, I feel <laughs> I feel like you know, I, I don't know. I think it's okay to read War and Peace again. That's all I'm saying. And uh, I don't even think about any of this. But moving on, more crimes. I want to hear more crimes. Okay. Do you want to stay or do you got to go? To, you're going to go to bed now. I'll, I'll try. It's like three o seven. You can. You should. You should be dismissed. We should. We should dismiss you. This is just going to be depressing. Or maybe it won't. Maybe it'd be like, oh, these little problems are nothing. I, I saw. I saw gunfire at the beach, and I didn't even yeah. react. I'm like Robert Duvall in Apocalypse Now. I'm like, yeah, whatever. All you have to do is, uh, Zarina, is just wave your hand as if it is a white flag and just leave the studio and we'll know, yeah. okay, she is going to bed. Yeah, so, we'll send you off. With, with, in the with, meantime, we'll keep posting uh, where you know where folks can find you. We know it's Byline Times. Uh, we have a great friend in our comments uh, who's been putting, a uh, true player who's been putting up your um, your Twitter handle. So where I where I can catch some of that stuff, I'll post it well, so everyone can... We can make sure everybody knows how to keep how to keep tracks track on you, tabs on you. It's such you important. It's such important fast. work, and I know you're very modest and and humble about the yeah. efforts. But it's really it's inspiring to see, and I'm so grateful to you for for doing the yeah. you know the work that you do. And it it don't don't think for a minute that it isn't important in making a difference because it absolutely is. Uh, I, I think honestly, when you're a writer, when you're a literary person of your caliber to dedicate yourself to this is the most important thing that you can yeah. do in this moment. That's my feeling. I know, I know a lot of writers can go off in their fucking cocoon, ignore what's going on. And I think that's stupid and bullshit because the writing that, that endures is the writing that comes out of the conflicts that happen in the moment. And the rest of the stuff is just all fucking masturbation. Sorry. That's my opinion. That's it. Well, you know? we agree with you. Yeah. Remember our Have conversation, it? Zarina, before you left? <laughs> Hem Hemingway wasn't like sitting in Kansas City, like sipping tea, being like, well, I know there's war over there. Maybe I'll write about it here. He was right there in the middle of all the shit. You know, yeah. it, 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 that, that, that's how this stuff works. So no, she needed, uh, Zarina needed to go. She needed to be there. Yeah, you did. You <laughs> yeah. absolutely needed to you be did. there. We're, we're happy to be there. Okay. You did. Okay, well, we're doing this now. Moving Hang on. on. Okay. I'm putting on the clock, everybody. Yeah, we'll do this so, quick. It's so depressing. Eight minutes. Are you waving that you have to go? Are you? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wave, but I might listen. So don't say anything Good. behind my back. <laughs> okay. If you okay. snore, we'll put you on mute. It's fine. Um, okay, so the supreme crimes. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what's going on, everybody. The I believe it was in Idaho. Am I right? You're, Greg, what, you're correct. It's Idaho, right. but it's a lot of states. But this particular it's a lot thing, of states. So yeah. there was a recent article written about, you know, some doctors that are they're leaving. You know, you, you they're leaving the states where they're facing criminal prosecution and severe penalties for performing a medically necessary abortion to save the life of the mother. Yeah, which is in Idaho, okay. and these are OBGYNs. These are yeah. these are medical people that are delivering babies which by the way happens all the fucking time and never stops happens all the time never stops so this is our what our supreme court has these federalists have done to us um i just i think this is the beginning of a huge wave you're going to see doctors leave, because what do you want the doctor everybody think about this even the the, the crazies you really want a doctor tending to you who is perfectly fine with your death. Wrap your mind around that. Yeah. Because those are the doctors who are going to stay. That, that's what it's going to be. And those are the doctors who are going to go to those states. They're going to have to be lured with money and, you know, an opportunity and they'll go, but they're going because they are okay with their patient dying when they could do a very simple procedure to save that patient's life. The baby's dead too, by the way. Sorry. So it's yeah. not like by letting the mother die, you're saving, you know, <laughs> an ectopic pregnancy or whatever, what, you know, whatever it might be, whatever complications might be happening. And that's killing the mother on principle is what you're doing. Killing the mother on principle. Letting like this is, so this is where women are chattel. We're just property. We're just there to be wombs. 
for the domestic supply of infants, as we know, Amy Coney Barrett put down, literally as a just sitting Supreme Court judge, wrote those words down into the Dobbs, into whatever the draft was that as they were uh, before they got to the final Dobbs decision. So th that's what's happening. I can't imagine this is going to be a one-off. I don't know about you, Greg. It, it feels to me like as all these states that have all of these extreme measures now, you're going to see an exodus of doctors that have actually the skill set to provide care for women, women's health and reproductive care. You're going to see a mass exodus, and you'll probably see doctors flooding into the space that have a predilection to making sure that that the women that are their patients die. Yeah. you got Dr. Death going on here. Yeah. So what kind of sadists are we going to be attracting into that profession? I can't even wrap my mind around it. I really can't. That's it. I don't know. I don't know if I have much more to say to that I'll, or before my head pops off. It, it's, you know, I wrote about this months ago when the, when Dobbs first came out. I mean, the, the I don't think they've thought this through or if they have. Yeah. Then they're even worse than what we think. That's right. Because, you know, they're like, oh, and by they, you mean... oh we have to save the baby. There's no I, baby. I, There's no baby. A, 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 a zygote is not a fucking baby. A blastocyst is not a baby. It's just something that happens in the evolution of things. A significant number of, of uh, fertilized cells like that die. Any, uh, miscarriages are very common. And that's nature's way of doing it. And sometimes nature doesn't take care of it. And medical profession, because we live in 2020 fucking three, has to intervene and make sure that the mother is safe. Which is should be the only fucking thing that matters. Is, is making the mother safe. But Emotional no, safe, Sam Alito safe. believes in the sky god, thinks that... Bah, 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 bah. That's what's going on. I wrote a piece th that came out this morning about Asia Raiden was on my podcast and she was talking about, she said, we have achieved peak crazy, which was a wonderful thing to say. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, have we? Have we achieved peak crazy really? And I'm like, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened in this country? And the answer is the witch trials, I think. I'm sure there's lots of crazy things we could argue, but that one sprung to my mind, you know. And here's the witch trials, which are batshit nuts. If you read about them, they are insane. They are just like, Satan has taken possession of these witches and, and, and they're, they're, all the bad problems can be traced to these witches and we need to kill these women right now. The defense for those people is that they were in the ultimate silo of silos. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have the benefit of any of this stuff. Uh, <laughs> did she sign off or did she? Yeah, she's falling asleep. I saw her fall asleep. So. She's yeah, in it's the good. middle it's of the night. Bye, honey. We love you. Yeah. Bye, Z. Um, and, you know, they, they. where else are they going to get their information? We're living in, in the internet age. The entire vast knowledge of all the world is available at our fingertips. And these fucking idiots in, a, in Idaho think it's a good idea to do this. It, it just boggles the mind. Like, but it's never been no about speech. information. It's never been. Madness is not about knowledge. Madness is the embrace of cruelty, sadism, and power yeah. in the pursuit of power in the face of knowledge. That's madness. So there's peak crazy and then there's madness. And this yeah. is nice because these people don't believe. Some are true believers, but many are not. Yeah. They're just, they're, it's, it's not any different than nations swept up into war crimes. And it, it's just not. It's, we're doing, this is what we're doing now because this is part of who we are and what we believe we need to do for ourselves, for our sense of identity, power, strength, and privilege. That's what it is. That's madness. It's because ma there's no, there's no, yeah. absolutely, it's a death of empathy. It's the death of empathy. You it's know? not it's, even. It's it, it's a it's a which is, you know, it's a lack. It's not even death. Death implies that it once was alive. This is this is an utter lack and a lack of imagine of basic scientific knowledge. Any of it. It's just all crazy. And the fact that we can't figure out, just, we have to expand the fucking court. The way to defeat Leonard Leo is to expand the court. If we expand the court, 30 yeah. years of his life's work blows up yeah. in a fucking second. 
That's when I'll be happy, not when fucking Alvin Bragg indicts for some fucking bullshit. We, we can okay. keep going over and over this. It's just not going to happen. <sighs> not going to happen, Greg. I know but you the brain want to drain is going to continue. There was People a moment gonna... for it to happen, and it is. It, we lost that moment. There was yeah. a moment for, uh, for the entire intelligence community and the Department of Justice to get cleaned out of all the Trump appointees and a lot of the corruption. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Did not happen. Didn't happen. These I, were all the same moment. It was all the same moment. I hope I, there had if the next time there's a crisis, we have to do this shit because otherwise we're we're doomed. We're fucking doomed. We can't have this. Okay. All right. Announcements last time. Right. Oh yeah. Announcements. Hold on. Wait. Before we do the announcements. Yeah. We have to give Zarina a proper farewell. Oh. She's okay. so brilliant. Like I, know. I, I remember like. She's doing this stuff. English is like her third language, I think. Yeah. And she's processing all this stuff. She's communicating it in like her third language. She's yeah. doing all this other stuff. It, it's really amazing what she's doing. I, yeah. I'm just in awe of how like the, the brain there is just like, oh my yeah. God, this person is just amazing. Just yeah. amazing. And the and the the ethical uh beauty of it is it, it's mm. just so inspirational, really. I, I'm so like in awe of her. That's all I can say. That's it. Me too. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, and and God, special. God, for if you're up there, keep her fucking safe, please. Keep her safe. Jesus, protect her at all costs. Protect Serena at all costs. That's what I say. That's what I say too. I know. I know. All right, let's go for announcements. Okay, do we have announcements? We're doing an after show. We're doing an Which after show. I, I just realized an after hours. I just realized I forgot to give. I forgot to give everybody the link to the after hours, which is going to be something that people are going to want, I suppose. Okay, so you're doing that on Twitter? I know I was doing something. No, I'm not doing it on Twitter. Little... I'm doing it right here. I'm do I'm gonna. Oh, good. After hours, please bear with me. Uh, I'm gonna go okay. here to this page. Here is the link. Copy link address. Uh, can I do this? Can I put it into the comments? I think I can. Nice. Bear with me. This is bad TV. I apologize. That's okay. There it is. Okay. You should right. be able to follow that very link right there. Hang on. <laughs> there it is. Not for you, LB. You have your own link. I but I'm trying to find where you posted it. It's right here. It's in the it's in the it's in the thing under the five eight. No, I don't see. It. I don't have it. This is really bad TV now. Got it. Natasha says she got it. It's there. Well, put it on the screen. That's what all I was gonna do is put it on the screen. Oh, I can do that too. Right. There. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oops. Oh, you We're do both it. doing it. You do it. You do it. You're in charge of this. This is your job. No, that's that's it. Hi, Scott. Okay. <laughs> Hang it. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I was coughing. There it is. That's the link. That's the link. Okay. It's members only. At members the moment, only. it's not. But members only. I'm going to change it to members only as soon as it starts. So, <laughs> for a variety of technical reasons that. I, honestly, all of this, this internet is shit is like sorcery anyway. It's sorcery. Listen, and everybody go ahead and sign. It's, we put it at $1.99 because we're not really trying to, you know, separate you from your money. We're just trying to create something special for people who are our patrons. And so that's why the threshold is so low because um, it's two bucks. Come on. Um, and if you want to give more, give more. That would be great. We'd love to see you in there. We're going to have conversations about... This last talking? topic. So we're going to continue talking about, yeah, the, last continue talking about the last topic. And we're yeah. Gonna, I have um, other things too. I have other and there's things other things too. And then Greg, I think you had, the, I think there's something, one of our favorite things I think is coming back. So did you have something to show us? We're going to talk about I this. Have, I forgot that I did this. So, okay. I'll just show it. I'll just show it. And then we can talk about it after. Okay. okay. This is, uh, yeah, it's coming back. And now, a sneak preview from next week's episode of HBO's Emmy winning series, Succession. Featuring the trademark crackling dialogue the show is known for. In this scene, siblings Kendall and Shivroy probe the depths of their emotions as they discuss who will succeed their father, Logan Roy. Is it okay? Okay. Are you okay? I'm okay. Is it good? It's good. Are you good? Are you good? I'm good. Are we good? We're good. Are Shiv, you? are we good? We're good. We're good? We're, we're good, we're, yeah. We're okay. Are we good, yeah? It's good. It's good. Are you good? We're okay. It's okay. Shiv, I think it's gonna be okay. I think it's good. We're okay. We're okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. we're good. 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 We're good. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. 
That was a sneak peek from Succession. And now, back to the show. Okay, yeah. My wife and I did that on a, on a car ride home from somewhere. We were cracking ourselves up. That version was. I know that you said it to me, and I died for a week. I just thought it was the greatest thing ever. I played it over and over and over again. It's, it's, All right, here we go. Okay, we got to go to the fifth thing. We're oh my god, we're so late. Okay, we're Guys, so late. I will tweet out. I will tweet out the link. Don't worry about the link. Go to Please. Greg's Twitter page. He'll okay, tweet out the I link. Tweet the players out. in here putting up the link. It's ah, it was be. full of spoilers, right? <laughs> All right, we're we're on the clock. We're on the clock. Oh. The troll crimes. Wait a minute. Whoa, troll, whoa, whoa, crimes. Whoa, whoa. troll crimes. Yes. Troll crimes. Oh my God. The troll king. The troll king took the stand this week in a whoa. trial. Oh my so God. let's talk about it. Cause I know this is, I'm going to try to keep it from being too inside baseball um, for everybody. I think we can go back to two person screen here. There we go. Oh, no, oh, that's, that's the, the wrong, wrong one. one. We don't want oh, that. God. Um, <laughs> I look terrible. You look good. I look good. Oh, I don't know. But my hair's gotten flatter as a whole night has gone on. So there is this trial going on. I've been tweeting out from the two journalists that I know that have been covering it. Um, and one of them is responsible for the trial in the first place um, and the prosecution of this uh, individual who everybody might remember back in 2016, 2017 as Ricky Vaughn. Uh, that was his internet name. No one knew who he was. And it was uh, journalist Luke O'Brien. He was with HuffPost, I believe, at the time. He was. Uh, ex uh, figured, Found out what his name was and exposed his name and exposed the crimes that he had been engaging in, which was to create election, actual election interference. So in that 2016 election, we all went through it. And if you remember, we thought, okay, all the prognosticating was... Hillary's going to win. Da, 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 da. I knew Trump was going to win, but not because I had inside knowledge. I just knew what he had awakened in our nation with his racist shit. And I'm like, okay, if the if they're going to crawl out from under their rocks and actually vote, these people who are the great, un, you know, uneducated, unvoting. What did he, what did he call them? I love the uninformed. Uneducated. It was I love the uneducated. I love the uneducated. Um, it just was code for I love the bigots. I love the racist. Uh, you know this this these folks and the misogynists. So out they came to vote while also real votes were suppressed. And one of the suppression tactics and, and successful campaigns was uh, managed, I would say. I don't, I don't want to say it was founded, but it was managed by this character who I'll keep calling Ricky Vaughn because that's in my brain, how I know him, guys. But Ricky Vaughn from, yes, from Major League. Ricky from Major Vaughn, League. So, so does called his... because he used Charlie Sheen's face with a MAGA hat in, in the thing. That's right. Yeah. And so uh, uh, Douglas McMackey or whatever. Mackey. Who's, whose attorney, I believe, representing him in this case, is the attorney for Vidare, which is the biggest sort of it, most extreme, one of the most extreme uh, Nazi <laughs> militia things, right? And they have their own their own publications, everything for the First Amendment. So he's got himself this sort of First Amendment defense attorney, as far as I'm concerned. But I want everybody to understand this is not a First Amendment case. It was never a First Amendment case. Tucker Carlson has been going on and on about it as this sort of First Amendment. Marjorie Taylor Greene, all these, all the arsonists are out there going, oh, they're coming for us, our speech. And no, no, no. The only reason this man's private messages and words are being used in a courtroom is because it's giving indications what his mindset and his motives were, were, were towards running an election interference uh, criminal racket. So he it, he created a phone, they, a phone number was created, was sent out and targeted mostly to black Americans in very specific districts in swing state to say, if you call, this will be your vote. And you can't do that. That's that's illegal. So this was all part of the uh, original reporting of, of Luke O'Brien from, I think, back in 2018. And it's taken this long for this trial to happen, for this man to be um, uh, indicted and uh, brought to trial. Now, the other big part of this trial, which many of you, if you people follow the extremists beat closely, especially the Twitter, you know, all these troll wars and, and meme wars that we, in this information war space that we've been in, um, which is connected to Putin and it is connected to Trump because it was all about advancing MAGA and advancing Donald Trump, getting him into office to begin with. Can that be, can he be memed into office? Can we meme a presidency, right? Which the sort of 
a, a gauntlet thrown down for the trolls, which were coming out of 4chan. Again, we all knew that, but we're now hearing this in court testimony. Yet, yes, these were these were people who were in the in the B rooms and in the in the dredges of 4chan. They were recruited out of there. They were good with the memes. They were they're trolls. They're there to sort of incite. It's not like you had with all of these trolls involved in in, in MAGA in, in Donald's campaign, and especially the extremists. They shared an ideology, uh, but underneath a lot of the ideologies that we are all that constantly get pointed at for extremists is the troll culture, which is just nihilism. It's just sadism and nihilism. It's just these are antisocial personality disordered individuals who get very addicted into uh, seeing if what they can do can evoke a specific response from a stranger. Can I get a stranger to get upset? Can I, you know, about something I don't even care about and they shouldn't care about. And then they sit back and they laugh at it. It's entertainment to them. It's what they call irony. You know, they used to call that and they have all their bullshit things. You know, you've got, the, you know, ice cream clones and the Peppy the Frog. And we all remember all this shit, right? If it's too inside for you and you're listening outside of this, I don't know what to say. <laughs> like it's, this is just a big wave of. It's weird. It's weird, and it's, it's a obscure, weird world. But of it all odd people. It it does matter, and I think it, yeah. it's, you know, because I find it to me these people are so boring that I. I but they're not. They affected but an election. They it, they it, did. They they're responsible yeah. for Trump. And That's they have right. to pay the fucking price so we That's have to right. understand what the trial is about. Because they committed crimes in, for it, right? They committed yeah. crimes in the beliefs. So a couple of things came out. One of them we'll talk about after hours. So some of the stuff that's coming out in this court case is, yep, it was uh, coming out of 4chan. Yep, it was, right? And also, yes, there was a sort of mastermind inside of all this, which was what your meme was about, your, your book cover was about. There's a guy that is the king of the trolls. And a lot of us knew that at the at back in 2016, 2017, because he was in our faces. And it was a character called Microchip. He had named himself Microchip. I call him Radio Shack because <laughs> I just like calling him Radio Shack. And uh, there he was really running these operatives. Um, he's very close with Jack Posobiec. Luke posted, O'Brien posted a thread about that today. I encourage everyone to go read Luke's thread on this. No one knows more about this than Luke O'Brien, really, truly. So yeah. read what he's putting out and the information. He's being careful with it and there's reason for him being careful with it. And none of it is malicious or suspicious or any of that. He's just being careful with the information because this is an ongoing trial right now. This man's on trial. Um, and Microsoft as a, a Radio Shack was turned by the government, right? So that came into the feds, came into the FBI uh, we can all presume um, uh, this that this man was could be a a valuable witness in uh, in this prosecution in this case against Douglas uh, Mackey or Ricky Vaughn. Now, what else is known in that is the reason that this individual's name is not being released now because his real name is not uh, not out there for consumption. <laughs> Um, and not put out in the court case. And he had to file a motion to be able to maintain his anonymity, but still be called as a witness. Uh, is because as it's indicated in the in the in the court reporting from the reporters who were at the trial, it was indicated that he is uh, also a witness or playing a role in other cases. Those cases are not named. We don't know what they are. Um, seemingly, this man, there's other prosecutions. Would it be? A lower level, like like understand, they've got. If we're gonna relate this sort of four chan meme lord arsonist, you know, domestic, truly the extremists and the domestic terrorists who are fused with the with those guys now and have been since 2016, uh, the Bannon crew, right? If we're going to relate that to organized crime, what this trial is like is it's like the government has Whitey Bulger on the stand to give information about one of his lieutenants. They put the mob boss in, turned him into a confidential informant, a confidential witness. I, I used the mob boss, the head of the snake, the guy who's responsible for everything, as the confidential witness 
to report on a lesser lieutenant that they it's have. Tony, it's Tony Soprano testifying against Silvio or Christopher. That's right. And so you got to wonder what the fuck is the government doing? What the fuck are they thinking? There better be a bigger fish to fucking fry. This motherfucker better be giving up the goods on Assange. Because this is, they were all into the WikiLeaks stuff. They were all into the Podesta shit. These are the people who ran all that shit, right? They were the ones who were surfacing all that shit. They were the ones who were, information was coordinating. They had a war, quote unquote, war room in DMs on Twitter. They used Twitter. Twitter enabled this. That was when Jack was running it. He enabled all this shit to go down this way. So this, I, I better see coming in the coming months, a, a huge fucking trial that Radio Shack helped with because if the government is so ignorant and stupid about how this fucking disinformation shit is run, how these meme lords run their shit, that they took the head of the snake and said, we're going to buddy with you. And just, you know, he taught these people how to do this. Yeah. He showed them how to do what they did that subverted our election. Who cares if he turns on these motherfuckers? They're his underlings. Yeah. They go to prison. This guy walks free. What do you think he's going to fucking do? He admitted on the stand. His test of those reporters were putting out his testimony best they could. You know, he admitted. I didn't believe it. Didn't matter. I didn't care. This guy is as malevolent as it fucking gets. And our government is like, yeah, help us take out the people you trained. Then what? They release him into the wild. Guess what he's going to do? Do it all over again. Unless some intrepid reporters. <laughs> tell the world who he is or somehow take him down. Cause I just, I, I, I'm, I'm at a place where I'm watching all this and I don't have guys, I don't have inside information. I don't, I don't know, but I'm watching all this going, this better not be what it looks like. There better be some fucking massive fucking thing that this motherfucker, that radio shack, right. Is helping them with and has real information on to bring real prosecutions against some badass fucking even bigger criminals than he, because if he's just taken down Ricky fucking Vaughn, give me a fucking break. Yeah. I'll get it in our after hours. We'll get into like the titty twister thing and the stuff that happened to our friends and people we knew. And they're, they're watching all this going, what the fuck? <laughs> so we'll get into it. Right. It's like we'll they, you know, it's like they got manager Lou Brown from Major League to testify against Ricky Vaughn and Willie Mays Hayes. You know, he's did bad things for Trump. That's what the manager sounds like in Major League. He's got this <laughs> okay. new voice. And in real that. life, in real life, he's a terrific Broadway actor who I saw on Broadway in a production oh. of Sam Shepard's Buried Child. Not Radio Shack. No, Shack. not Radio yeah. Shack. We don't yeah. know who Radio Shack is. Who's the we funniest? Don't. Who's the funniest person Radio Shack could possibly be? If this was a movie, it would be like a woman, by the way. We would all think it was a guy and it was like a woman. Yeah, well, you that's, know who he, you know what he is? He's a he's a 400 pound guy in the basement. Mm. He, that was the description. He walked into that courtroom extremely described as extremely heavy set in a royal blue sweatsuit. This is Michael Hayden. Go to Michael Hayden's page. You have to go back like a day or two. Greasy, you know, black hair, neck beard. Whoa, 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 whoa. You've described the guy that owns the comic book store on The Simpsons. That's okay. microchip. Okay. That's Radio Shack. Yeah. I did yeah. not know that. I'm going to have to prepare a, a, a better, <laughs> you have better to thing prepare for yourself. Time. Go to Go to Hayden's no. page, his Twitter page. Not not yeah. the former head of the NSA, Michael Edison Hayden. Hayden he works at the Southern Pirate Law Center. Yeah, different, yeah. Uh, different Michael Edison. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. <laughs> There's another big lesson in this, and this is what we will also talk about after hours. And there's no reason to doubt this, everybody. So I want our audience to hear this, especially those that go in there and they fight with the trolls. All right. Ricky Vaughn, Douglas Mackey, was not paid. That's something that the folks in the realm of the light assume about mm. these motherfuckers, but he wasn't paid. He wasn't doing this because he was on a payroll. He was just doing it because it brought him pleasure. 
It brought him pleasure to burn shit down. It's also highly addictive. Remember, it's in the Twitter platform that all this was going on. These are people who cannot, once they get in there, they can't stop what they're fighting. He was um, tweeting a hundred times a day. Their agenda. Hundred hmm? times a day. Hundred tweets a day. It said. Yeah, hundred tweets a day. It's an That's addiction. A lot. I tweet like not pay. Was doing it for his own pleasure, and it, doing and his pleasure involved an addictive platform. So he's also an addict doing this. Really got to remember that, you guys, because there's this constant. I see nothing but with the, with people who are trolls, even like the. The shit that happened to me, that w- everyone's, oh, they must be paid. They, no. It, I know it's hard because you think I would have to be paid to do something so fucking evil. That's where people go in their brains. I'd, you'd have to be paying me. These people, it's not evil to them. It's not. It's it's their, it's their crack. You don't have yeah. to pay them. You just have to unleash them. Yeah. They just have to feel like they can cross those lines. And once you have an individual starts crossing lines like that, and they have that antisocial personality disorder and they're disordered personalities in other ways, there's massive narcissism at the center of it. There's Machiavellianism in there. Once that happens, once they cross the line and engage and get that hit, right? Get this, you know, I'm sure it was incredibly addictive for this Ricky Vaughn to be doing what he's doing and watching people actually call that fucking phone number and think that they were voting. He felt like a master of the universe and well, he was we should, we should, an election. We so should we'll explain that it. in hmm? case people, in case people watching don't understand what he did. These are the memes that incur that said wrongly, maliciously that instead of voting, you could text your vote for Hillary Clinton. Right. And they set yeah. up the fake, they set up the phone they number. Fake they, number. They, they made it look they ran a whole thing. It was clearly a coordinated operation. It, it wasn't it the was guy fucking targeted up. targeted at black voters. And the free speech thing is, as the court was trying and the prosecution was trying to show what his motivation might have been for this because he wasn't paid. So what's your motivation? Um, that's why what came out were his statements about his views on, on uh, African-Americans, his views on women. His, you know, it, and so that that viewpoint was like, oh, he he perceives uh, these voters to be lesser than him, and he derives pleasure out of knowing that he's robbing them of their vote, and he doesn't want their vote. He, he has many statements about how he he doesn't think uh, African Americans should vote. He doesn't think women should vote. He didn't, you know, his ideological beliefs are that we are a nation of. Uh, founded by white property males for white property males. And and that's the culture of America and it should not be changed or challenged. So, you know, that's- You know who's not going to vote now? Hmm. Him, when he's a fucking felon. When he's a felon, he's not going to vote. Yay, Greg. Thank you for ending our crime show on the right note. Yeah, it's the right note. It's a Ricky Vaughn fastball right down the fucking pike, man. Uh... (laughs) I wish I could think of a better law uh, line from. Oh, I know. Fuck hmm. you, Joe Boo. That's the line from from Major League. Okay, so it is now nine forty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is what time is it there? Six forty p.m. Yeah. L.A. time. The show's gone way long. It doesn't matter. We had zero We're here for you all night. We are going to come back in ten minutes at nine fifty Eastern Time, six fifty L.A. time. Uh, right. Is that enough time for you? you gonna That's be okay? fine for me. Yeah. I'm going to take a little break and I'll come back with a, uh, probably something a little warmer because it's a little cold now in my house. That's what we're going to do. So everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, thank you to Zarina again in mm-hmm. awe of her. My God, what a, what a wonderful, uh, update on what's going on there. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, she's something else. It's I really love her. just a force of nature. Uh, love her so much. Okay. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Good night. Good night.